それなら本物の魔女の館に見えるように飾り付けしません We could even traumatize those kids with so crushingly depressing ending <laughs> <sighs> Seriously, don't make the same mistake I did. We open this week with probably one of the most G rated tellings of Hansel and Gretel ever, and kind of appropriately considering this week's themes, it kind of gave me vibes of Ojama Doremi's cold openers in terms of layout by basically being a preview for the episode proper. Said proper episode opened with Agiha teaching her class about Halloween, and yet none of them really understood the real point of the holiday. However, in keeping with at least some of the original spirit of the holiday, a few of the kids wanted to go to an actual witch's house that they had found. One that just so happened to sound like Agiha's current residence. Does that mean we can burn you at the stake too? They based their belief of Yo-Yo being a witch mostly on just circumstantial evidence and Elle flowing in her little carriage, which really that's just her doing her Grogu cosplay. Thus the Precure decide to go all in for their little trick-or-treating guess. <laughs> Well, considering what happened with this week's Otona Precure, may as well throw this joke in. Hey! You two should kiss! Meanwhile, Batamonde completed his costume of the Ava units from episode 9. We would check back in on him later, but first, we had to go through the less interesting part of the episode at the Precure's witch house. I mean, don't get me wrong, this scene wasn't bad or anything, the Precure's costumes were cute, and it was overall kind of wholesome seeing them giving out treats to the kids. Moreover, Mashiro's speech about Halloween was legit good, basically talking about how people tend to open up a little more on this particular day, which if you've seen some of the videos of Shinjuku's parties, then maybe they open up a little too much, but whatever, it's still a nice message. However, the real highlight of this episode ended up coming from this scrub. <laughs> uh, dude, the Dancing Star Precure auditions are over there. Yeah, believe it or not, they actually gave Cure Punk in here a full transformation sequence and everything, with easily some of the best animation of this episode. It was legit well done, but also kind of over the top and overblown, making for some perfectly good cringe comedy, you know, as opposed to just plain cringe like with Gorilla. <laughs> Thus, appropriately, the next thing he did was something that has unfortunately become a bit of a trend recently thanks to live streaming. <laughs> Sir, the shop has a very strict no IRL streaming policy. Oh yeah, well what are you gonna do about it? <coughs> oh crap. One can only hope in a post giant Somali world. However, he wasn't doing this for some cheap super chats, but rather to try and degrade the Precure's popularity, which, financially speaking, can't go much further down. But yeah, once again, the best comedy of this show came from Batamonda, and in particular, Ken's performance of the character. He was just so into it that it became absolutely infectious, not to mention everyone flatly no selling his claims that he was a cure was also hilarious. I mean, clearly, this franchise can't do more than one main boy cure per season anyway. Anyway. Thus he decided to just take the treats and leave, but hey, at least he used an eco bag. That's a hell of a lot more subtle than Otona Cure's environmental messages. Anyway, to counter Batamonda's mischief, the Precure decided to compensate by passing out treats. And I guess this is supposed to be a heartwarming and cute moment, but honestly, I'm just more concerned about this old lady's retirement fund. And yeah, it was a nice cute sequence and everything, but can we just go back to Batamonda? Well, unfortunately, much like most kick streamers, people mostly started to ignore him until they could bust him for legit charges. And yet, in spite of all of his tricks, the kids still did give him a treat, and while this actually would be a decent moment to start properly building a face turn for this character that we even kind of saw in the last episode featuring him, Batamonda actually rejected their gift. And thus, he started to launch an attack, which honestly, after spending so much time with him in this episode, I was actually kind of looking forward to another fight with him to highlight his somewhat relatable struggles of trying to stand out and... Come on, Undergreen! Boo! Yeah, other than Batamonda's hilarious reaction here, the episode 
just kind of lost me here. Because really, Skierhead has just become such a nothing character, as even by the end of this fight, he didn't even say anything other than summoning his monster and denying that he was behind Batamonda's pranks. Said fight wasn't even all that great, as clearly the best animation was used up on Cure Pumpkin. And while the sequences here were not entirely bad, like say Aoyama's level, there were still some very off frames. And then there was Sora's motivation for this fight. Well, I see this writer still insists on giving Sora a few less brain cells. To be fair, the final sequence was kind of clever with all of the cures using a combination of their attacks to project Sora towards the monster and break his lollipop shield, which probably won't sit too well with Sam. And after the fight, Batamonda did receive some deserved karma, though again, it probably would have made more sense if he had been the one to actually launch the monster attack rather than this stick in the mud. We also got a bit of something that we really should have seen a lot more of, Elle having a slight bit of identity crisis when she got some baby treats while still in her Cure Majesty form. As I said before, I just didn't get why we're supposed to get invested in this character if she's going to talk like a baby most of the time, and sure enough, they haven't really done much of anything with her since her debut. Like, is she going to at least get an episode next time to help develop her character a little more at all? Why do you get the feeling like the episode is going to be written by Yoshimi Narita? Anyway, the episode ended with the kids having a fun Halloween, especially after learning that Yo-Yo worked with the Precure. Yeah, y'all kind of suck at this whole secret identity thing. This was a really fun and pretty hilarious episode when it wasn't about our title characters. Again, I have nothing against the scenes with the Precure handing out treats, as it was wholesome and everything, but come on, let's be real here, Batamonda becoming a kick streamer was easily the highlight of this. Granted, I don't think any of us would actually want to meet a guy like him at a party, though we might watch a few videos of him, especially as a rest. I think what really made Batamonda's scene stand out more was the fact that they were almost entirely separate from the Precure stuff. Sure, they did start to cross over in that final act when they tried to clean up the mess he had made, but then Skierhead showed up in his Buzz Killington costume, and the fun was just all drained away. Still, at least what we did get from Cure Pumpkin's antics was fun while it lasted. From how he created his costume, to the main faces he made under it, to Ken absolutely hamming it up, he was a legit riot. I think of all of the villains in this show, I could say this is the one guy who has won me over. Sure, he's no longer anything resembling a threat, but at least he has enough personality to last for days that isn't restricted to just farts or steroid jokes. There was even a small hint that he was considering a face turn that in some ways was more effective than Mashiro just giving him a compliment as Monda. I really like the idea that a small act of kindness could start to change a person. Alas though, that didn't really come to pass as he was mostly chased off for the rest of the episode. Meanwhile, the Precure handing out treats was just fine, and Mashiro did get a good speech in, but otherwise, it was just kind of there. Thus, overall, this was an episode that I would suggest just watching for Cure Pumpkin, who to his credit didn't buy at least the trickster part of the holiday well. Obviously, we don't suggest you do what he does, otherwise I hear even three years in Japanese prison can break most men. Believe it or not, we actually managed to get another Halloween video done on Friday, but also had to make a few last minute edits to it. Thus, we'll just release it first thing on the actual day this Tuesday, which really just makes the most sense anyway. It's also worth mentioning that due to sports, next week there isn't going to be any Hero Sky, which considering that we're also reviewing Ultima Preka on a weekly basis, yeah, that's a massive relief for me at least. Still, look forward to all of that. Until next time though, for now my friends, and uh, hey, I see you putting up that tree. Can't you at least wait until everyone's done trick-or-treating before you move on to the next holiday?